We will first of all show the standard that is widely established throughout the world in many hospitals for turning patients from on their back to the prone position. An increasing number of doctors and staff are becoming aware of the risks for patients and personnel that this standard brings, since until now no practical solution has been made available. The safety and the physical integrity of the patient are of utmost importance. This principle applies to all when working with patients. If a product offers, in addition to the safety of the patient, less work for staff, less physical strain, higher sterility during storage, quieter, faster, safer patient rotation, shorter changeover time, and less storage space, a lot has already been achieved. The risks rise and fall depending on the expertise of the theater staff when turning patients under anesthesia from on their back to the prone position and back. If staff are insufficiently trained, cheap workforce, the risk of more patient injuries increases. Torn out inlet or outlet tubes, respiration problems, shoulder dislocations, and fractures in patients with osteoporosis are known problems. Turning the patient from on their back to the prone position requires a sufficient level of staff based on current standards. The rule of thumb is that the taller and heavier the patient, the more people and space are needed, something not always available. On average, a patient of normal weight requires three to four people. The physical exertion and the stress when turning a patient under anesthesia in the operating theater is a factor that must not be underestimated. The large number of people moving around in the theater means that the sterility of the instruments and the sterile covered devices cannot always be guaranteed. This training video was recorded on purpose with a tall, heavy person, 198 centimeters, 150 kilograms, to show that even such patients can be turned safely on block on the table with two to three people. We remove the protective cover from the PTS cart. Remove the back section and lay it out on the operating table. Then cover the back section with a hydrophobic disposable cloth from the set. Lower the inner part into a horizontal position. Lay the patient on the back section, adjust the leg cushions, leave the heels free, and cover with a cloth. At the wish of the patient, an additional cushion may be placed under the head. Now cover the headrest cushion with a toweling stocking from the disposable set and put in back in place. Loosen the retaining strap from the front section on the PTS cart. Both arms are placed along the side of the body and all inlet or outlet tubes are led loosely to the shoulders. If a catheter is used, place a cover over the patient's genitals and put the urine pouch or urimeter between the legs. Wrap up the patient from the feet to the neck with the second disposable cloth from the set. If the patient has to be pulled downwards towards the feet, this should be done while the patient is on their back. Take the PTS cart to the operating table. Tip the front section sideways onto the patient. Lay out the cushions on the patient. The side Velcro straps on the front and rear sections are then joined together under tension. The inlet or outlet tubes are packed into the cocoon. Take the headrest without the mirror and place it on the patient's face and attach it with the neck holder. Lead the tube with the extension and the respiration tube along the side of the headrest and attach it with a clamp lever on the left or right side. Connect the front section to the slide rails on the headrest, pulling gently. 
Swing the arm of the tube holder out and attach all inlet or outlet tubes, including the respiration tube. None of these tubes should be attached to the table. Now connect the lateral head section flaps on the front and rear, pulling gently. One person stands on the left and one on the right of the operating table and they tip over the cocoon gently. The second person pushes the PTS roll board from the opposite side under the cocoon, gets into position, and takes hold of the handles on the cocoon on the opposite side. The person standing opposite the first one takes hold of the visible red handles on their own side and on the command of the anesthetist, they both pull with the same amount of force on it. The cocoon rotates over the PTS roll board and is placed in the middle of the table. Then the PTS roll board on the opposite side is removed and placed on the PTS cart. First of all, undo the Velcro straps on the side Loosen all inlet or outlet tubes from the tube holder arm and swing it back into place. Using the mirror, check the patient's face. Loosen the neck holder and lay down the headrest. Loosen the rest of the Velcro straps. Place the leg cushions and the disposable cloth on the back cushion. Loosen all inlet or outlet tubes from the tube holder arm and swing it back into place. Remove everything from the patient. Then remove the arm holder on the chest cushion and move, first of all, the arms with the drips and then remove the arm holder on the pelvic cushion in the same way. Feel the anterior superior iliac spine to check whether the pelvic cushion is in the right position and carry out a visual check of the position of the chest cushion. Neck and shoulders free. Adjust if necessary. First of all, attach the arm holders on the pelvic cushion. Place the arms along the body and lead all inlet or outlet tubes to the shoulders. After that, put the arm holder on the chest cushion and retighten the neck holder. Push any radon bottles between the pelvis and chest cushion. Place the catheter between the legs. Place the back section with the disposable cloth on the patient. Attach the Velcro straps and cover with a protective cloth. Attach all inlet or outlet tubes and respiration tube on the tube holder arm. Connect the rest of the Velcro straps on the head section. Before turning, check the patient's face and remove the mirror. One person stands on the left and one on the right of the operating table. One takes hold of the red handles and tips the patient gently. The other person pushes the PTS roll board from the opposite side under the cocoon, gets into position, and takes hold of the handles on the opposite side of the cocoon. Then the other person takes hold of the lower, visible red handles on their side and gets into position. On the command of the anesthetist, both pull with the same force on the handles. The cocoon rotates over the roll board, which is then removed from the opposite side and placed on the PTS cart. If desired, the patient can be pulled upwards towards the head. First of all, loosen all inlet or outlet tubes on the tube holder and swing it back in. Loosen the Velcro strap along the side of the body and place the straps on the chest cushion. Loosen the rest of the Velcro straps. Place the leg cushions and the disposable cloth on the back cushion. After that, loosen the respiration tube and the neck holder. Slowly and carefully remove the headrest, dispose of it in the PTS cart, and secure. Loosen the remainder of the straps from the front and back sections. Pull the PTS cart alongside the operating table 
and tip the front section onto the cart with the PTS roll board. After adjustment, attach the retaining strap. Place the movable part of the PTS cart in a horizontal position and secure it. Then remove the disposable cloth and cover the patient. After that, extend the arms. Place the extensions for obese patients on the thoracic and pelvic cloths. The red safety stripe must always be totally covered to ensure safety. The mobile handles can be used on the cart without extensions. Once in place, always tug to check everything is secure. Only pull in the direction the Velcro straps are attached or they will come undone. The PTS box has two marked places on the rear. If they are pressed, the openings for the holder on the PTS card are released. One box contains 10 disposable sets.